السلام عليكم السلام عليكم or السلام عليكم if in IELTS reading vocabulary is your main problem then this video is a vital video for all the IELTS students and IELTS trainers how to get the meanings of unseen words will be taught now okay here comes a lesson now reading lesson guessing meanings from context so how to guess meaning from the context this is the lesson guessing meaning from the context in the IELTS exam is an important technique that will improve your reading skills and the speed will which you can read obviously you do not have a dictionary in the exam so there are likely to be a lot of words from the reading text that you do not understand and you cannot check if you come across a word you do not understand then you cannot spend a lot of time working out its meaning because you only have 20 minutes for each reading and therefore guessing meanings from the context is necessary this means work out what it means or have a good guess at least from the words that are around it or from the topic of the paragraph take a look at this example for example it had been raining hard through the night so the ground was saturated what does saturated mean we have to find that over here for example you may already know but if you do not you should be able to have a good guess from the rest of the sentences it had been raining which means the ground must be wet it was raining hard so this means the ground is probably very wet so saturated means completely wet by doing this you are guessing meanings from a context and you should try to use this technique for the words you do not know okay students over here i'm going to explain some very useful techniques there may be six techniques you should keep these techniques in your mind and if you will master these techniques then you will be able to to get the meaning of every unknown word what are those secret techniques i'm going to explain that you have to revise three to four times and if you have a whiteboard in your home write all these techniques on the whiteboard for three to four times and teach these techniques to your fellow beings if you will teach these techniques to others then you will definitely master it got it so let's go towards the techniques so here are the techniques number one technique is decide the part of the speech of the unknown word whether for example is it a noun verb or adjective or etc number one keep in mind decide the part of speech of the unknown word whether for example is it a noun verb adjective or whatever got it so parts of speech is the basic thing the first idea is find the parts of speech number two its position is a sentence will be a guide got it the position of the word in the sentence will be a guide for example as might its ending for example ending with n e d or i n g or ending might indicate is it a verb or whatever got it so ending must be in your brain number one it's a uh, pass of speech number two its position and find out its ending number three look for further clues in the words immediate collocates for example if it's a noun does it have an article which might suggest whether it's countable or not if it's a verb does it have an object so keep this in mind is it a verb then it will have an object so uh, keep in mind whether there's a verb or not so number three is words immediate collocates you have to find immediate collocates number four look at the wider context including the surrounding clues and sentences especially if there are signposting words such as but and however so so look for the 
signposting words but and however so that might give a clue as to how the word is connected to its context for example we got a, got home we got home tired but elated so over here tired and but then elated the presence of but suggests that elated is not similar in the meaning to tired in this way the but is actually reversing the meaning so keep in mind this technique it is very useful and if you will work on these techniques you need not to get the vocabulary which is very necessary or too much vocabulary so now number five look at the form of the word for any clues as to meanings for example downhearted is made up of down plus hearted down plus hearted a participle affix ed so got it so this is actually its its structure look for number five look at the form of the word for any clues as the meaning so for example downhearted is made up of down plus hearted means a participle affix is ed so what are the suffixes you should keep in mind what are those in this will be very easy for you now number six make guess as to the meanings of the word on the basis of the discussed strategies what strategies i have told you so students the strategies that i have told you these five strategies must keep in your mind and what to do is you have to guess the meaning of that word which is unseen or you have not heard or listened or watched or read that word before so what to do is you can guess on these basis if you do not understand then you have to follow my sixth sixth strategy what is that let's move ahead that is actually the seventh strategy i have told you six one the seventh is read on and see if the guess is confirmed so my strategy is read on and see if the guess is confirmed if not and if the word seems critical to the understanding of the text go back and repeat all the steps and if the word does not seem critical carry on reading maybe the meaning will be become clearer later on got it so it may not always be clear from the actual sentence and you may have to look at other sentences around the word however only do this for words that seems important for an understanding of the text if it looks like they are not move on with the reading you probably won't have a time to do it with every word especially if you are at a lower reading level so however only do this for the words that seems important for the understanding of the text if it looks like they are not then leave it and move on with the next words for the reading you probably won't have time to do it with every word especially if you are at lower reading level now let's move on here comes the practice students practice is very very important for everyone for every trainer and the student so what you do is you have to practice words and meanings and guess the meanings of unknown words i'm going to show you a passage in in that passage there may be different paragraphs before those paragraphs i'll show you the questions you have to keep in mind those questions and you can pause my video and write those questions on your notebook because this is a creative and interactive lesson training video write that on your notebook and then you should read that passage again and try to find out the meanings of those words got it this is practice here guessing meanings from context practice look at the reading below some of the words are in italic and the bold and they are quite difficult words so you may not know them try to guess their meanings from the sentence it is in or sentence around it and from the topic of the paragraph when you think you have guessed 
Choose from the words below the reading. Now let's see the questions before of finding it. Number one, the word disorientation in paragraph one is closest in meaning to. So find out the word disorientation. What is the meaning of the word disorientation? We have to find that over here. Now the next word is distorted. I know that you already know the meanings of these words. These are very uh, similar, simple words for everyone over here but who is learning IELTS, but uh, it is very simple so that you can guess the meaning too. Uh, because we should we should start from the simpler uh, structures and later on with the passage of time we can strengthen uh, and go for the difficult ones. So exploited in this one is exploited. What we have? So I'm gonna go ahead. Number five and number six is synthetic. And after. Uh, Highlighting these words, and I'm going to explain something again. Now, come over here. Number one, the words disorientation in paragraph one is closest in meaning two. We have to write the meaning over here. On your notebook, please write down these questions. Number two, the word distorted in paragraph one is closest in the meaning two. Number three, the word poppies in paragraph one is closest in meaning two. Number four, the word contradiction in paragraph one is closest in meaning two. Number five, the word explosion in paragraph one is closest meaning to. So in the first class, you can make the picture of these words or these questions over here and you can write if you uh, want to be on a comfort level. Gonna go ahead, number six, the word synthetic in paragraph two. Now come towards the paragraph two here, is closest meaning to, then the word uh, elicit and the closest meaning to, we have to find, write these words here so that you can get, you can get the guess of the meanings. Now the word is curious. You already know the meaning of the curious word, but over here we just want to give you a guess how to find the words. Not quite is a word, it's, it is very, very popular, and everyone knows this word. And if you are at the IELTS reading level or preparing for the IELTS, then you should uh, know the word addiction, actually. So these words are actually very, very simple, and, um, and you can guess those words by the practice of this one. Prohibition is in, in the word. So what is the meaning of prohibition? Because um, <laughs> I can, and I know what are the meanings of these words. If I'll tell you, then uh, the, the, the lesson will not be very useful for you. I'm gonna go ahead for that. Now go back over here. Uh, but before uh, that, let me tell you something. You have to get the, uh, the picture of this, the verb first, five questions. And after that, uh, six, seven, eight questions. And after that, you have to get the picture of the 9th to 14th question. You can stop the video which here to go, go back. Now, let's study the paragraph 1. I'll teach only paragraph 1 over here. And the other one will be uh, for you. You can pause my video. You can read. And uh, then you can write the meanings of those uh, words over there in the text. And then I'll tell you the answers. First of all, the five museum catalogs, opium dreams, and nightmare. First reaction, the silence, giant new opium museum, and the golden triangle are confused, pleasant surprise at cool air after the intense tropical heat. But then disorientation, shock, the fever, shock, even fear. Visitors enter uh, the 100-acre complex through a long, dark, mist-filled tunnel, which winds into the base of a hill past base relief of distorted human figures before emerging suddenly into the bright sunlight in front of the field of the poppies. This is the mystery. The contradiction of opium, says Charles Bell, head of the research of the May Far Long Foundation, which has just completed the $10 million museum. Opium is one of the very best drug we have for treating chronic pain and bringing relief from suffering, but it can also be one of the worst destroying lives if it is used re for recreation and exploited for commercial gains. So this is actually a paragraph for you. There are some words which I have made italic over here, and those all these five words uh, which are in these questions are present in that passage. You can find the meanings of those passage, the uh, meanings of these words from that passage. And after that, you can uh, uh, 
You can make the picture of the other one. For example, you should read it, guess the meaning, and after that, you can uh, stop here. You can make a picture, and after that, you can stop here. You can make a picture, and then you can stop here. You can make a picture. In this way, uh, there may be numerous paragraphs in your uh, cell phone or in your, in your laptop. <laughs> so what you do is you have to find the answers of that. But after, at the end of this lecture, I would like to give you also the answers which are according to me or according to the specialists there. Uh, in this way, you will be able to match your answers, but that will be at the end. This is actually the end of lecture. Thank you very much for working along with me. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe and like my, uh, my YouTube videos. You can watch the complete video. Now what you do is, all the trainers of IELTS who are watching my video and the students of IELTS who are watching my video, all of you must try to work along me. You should have a notebook in the hand and you should try to write something and the useful words. You should play, pause, reverse or rewind and see again my videos so that you can learn along and you can learn a lot too so thank you very much assalamu alaikum may you have great bands